Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the UNAR School of Medicine visual series on white blood cell disorders. For those of you who are familiar with services like Sketchy Medical, um, one of the more common and effective techniques for memorizing large amounts of information for diseases and pathogens is these uh, visual maps that tell stories to help you remember different aspects of, diff of these complicated processes. And I find them very helpful, but unfortunately there aren't many right now that exist for white blood cell disorders like leukemias um, and uh, lymphomas and things like that. So I decided I'd make my own, and that's what we're going to start going through today. These videos are each going to encompass several different diseases or disease processes, usually at least two or three per video. Um, because of that, they can get a bit complicated. Uh, there's a lot going on in them, and my artistic skills are certainly not up to the same level as some other services, but hopefully, regardless of that, they'll still help you and keep your these different facts straight and clear in your mind for when test day or step comes. Now, for those of uh, you who are not, school, if there's anyone watching from that's not School of Medicine, um, these videos I put together were a combination from two main sources. One, Pathoma, which everyone who's, you know, taking step one should be familiar with and go through, has basically all the different facts that we need to know. And our own white blood cell lectures, which, from our own professors, which may include uh, extraneous facts that aren't necessary for step one. But, of course, to help with our own lectures and tests at our school, I, of course, included um, in the videos. So take everything that you see with a grain of salt. Uh, again, try and follow along. I'll outline all of the different uh, features of each video as I go along. And hopefully this will help paint a good picture for each of these, first, these uh, disease processes. So the ones that we're going to start with first are the uh, neutropenia disorders. And I've categorized them into three different videos, one for congenital neutropenias, one for major neutrophil functional disorders, and the last for mild neutrophil functional disorders. Now, in all three of these videos, there are several of them that are, in fact, most of them that are inherited and congenital. So it's kind of misleading in a way to call the first video congenital neutropenias. But these ones are ones that are character not characterized by functional disorders necessarily. Um, the neutrophils that you do have are totally fine and they can do what they need to. You just uh, don't have them either in the right place or in the right uh, activity to get them to work right. So let's move on to the video. And this is our scene. We have, uh, it's a, a ski slope up in the Swiss Alps. And we'll start with explaining why Switzerland, right? So uh, Swiss, the Swiss are usually... Um, indicated or stereotypically in war is neutral right so i figured neutral neutrophil so anytime that we have um any neutrophils going on in our videos we're going to have these swiss flags going on to kind of emphasize that they are uh neutrophils and we've also got these pines pine trees in the background for penia so we have neutrophils penia neutropenia that's how we're going to be evidencing all of these three videos um which are all going to take place in basically Switzerland. The first of the congenital neutropenias that we have to worry about is this group right here, which are a family playing with cones. Fan, cone, Fanconi anemia. That's what we're going for here. Now, Fanconi anemia is due to autosomal recessive mutations in DNA repair, and that's evidenced by this poor little lad right over here who has his skis broken. Now the skis to some people of course might look like maybe a pair of X, like an X chromosome, a pair of chromosomes that have broken and he can't fix them. So this is our, he's unable to do DNA repair. Vanconi anemia is also typically uh, characterized in the clinic by physical deformities, which we see going on over here. Now he normally, he looks pretty normal, right? Um, but what I've tried to show here are the, oops, are these, uh, he's giving you a sort of thumbs up right here. And that's for the stereotypical Fanconi thumbs. So Fanconi thumbs, example of physical deformity. And lastly, we also have in Fanconi anemia, it's an anemia, so we expect that there's going to be something going on with uh, blood cells too. And that's because we have this bone marrow failure going on over here, that these skis can also, besides the sort of a chromosome, can also look like bones, and that they've snapped, and we have blood oozing out. And that's sort of indicating our uh, bone marrow failure. So that's Fanconi anemia. Family throwing cones, Fanconi thumbs, broken DNA repair, bone marrow failure. Okay, 
that all that's about all you have to know for uh, Fanconi anemia, and that of course results in a neutropenia state, even though there's no specific neutropenia symbol here. The next one that we're going to go to is cyclic neutropenia, which is evidenced by this group right here. So in this corner we have um, we'll start with uh, uh, this this carousel-like little playground thingy here, and these kids are going around in a cycle, right, a circle. So this is for our cyclic neutropenia. We also have this woman here who is our um, sort of like daycare attendant. Uh, there are two of them in this picture. There's also one over here, which we'll get to in a little bit. And her name is Ella. Uh, and that's, uh, as, we'll, as you'll see here, uh, is for ELA2, which is the primary autosomal dominant mutation that is present in cyclic neutropenia. Um, ELA2, if you feel like it, can also stand for, you know, like extra learning attendant, um, you know, fancy words for daycare attendants that make the kids feel better, but really it's just the parents' way of making sure that they're not in the way while they go have fun. Uh, so if uh, that helps, then memorize that too. But basically it's just, this is our ELA2 symbol. So anytime we see this woman here, who is like, again, our daycare center lady, ELA2, mutation. Now we have a moon here on top of this carousel pole, and that's because cyclic neutropenia has a uh, periodicity of about 21 to 30 days. Um, and there are basically two main things that I thought of when I heard of that. Maybe like it's the same as a menstrual cycle, or maybe it's the same as like a lunar cycle. And obviously one is easier to draw than the other and more appropriate, so here we have a moon. Um, this is our lunar cycle to help us remember 21 to 30 day periodicity. We have a sign over here advertising the daycare saying that to take care of a child is under $200 a day, which that sounds outrageously expensive to me, but maybe these fancy Swiss people are more uh, more affluent than I am. And why they're using dollars in Switzerland, I don't know, but we're going to ignore that for now. And this is to emphasize that uh, cyclic neutropenia is characterized by having an absolute neutrophil count, an ANC, of less under than $200. $200. So ANC under 200 cyclic neutropenia. Last, uh, lastly, we have the onset timing of cyclic neutropenia. Now, of course, the two main features of this of section of the sketch are these two kids, right? And that's because cyclic neutropenia is typically present in childhood. Um, that's usually when it shows up, and it usually self-resolves without any real treatment um, when during puberty. So we have this adult who's walking away, he's grown up, doesn't need the cycle anymore, so he's out of cyclic neutropenia. But the kids here are still inside it. So presents in childhood, resolves by itself with puberty. And that's cyclic neutropenia. So two diseases down. Let's go over to this section over here where we have uh, we have a line for tickets. And this is uh, because tickets cost money. So cost money, cost min. Cost min syndrome. This is our third congenital neutropenia. And uh, we see a similar sign over here. Tickets for skiing are under $200. Again, I think that's crazy, but, you know, these pro skiers, they know what they're getting into. So we have this under 200 because we have an ANC and Kostman syndrome of less than $200. Cost ticket, Kostman, under 200, ANC less than 200. We see the first person in waiting in line is uh, another one of our ALA uh, attendants. And this is, again, because Kosman syndrome, just like cyclic neutropenia, is characterized by an ELA2 mutation. And you can see that she's not even here for tickets, right? She's just chatting, uh, chatting up with the uh, ticket attendant here, and that's getting this guy pretty angry, right? This is uh, to emphasize that Kosman syndrome can also be caused by a uh, HAX2 mutation. Or, sorry, HAX1 mutation. HAX1. Um, emphasize that there's two ELAs, so ELA2 mutation, but there's only one guy with an X, so HAX1. Um, and he's getting pretty annoyed because she's taking forever and he just wants to go skiing with his uh, axe, right? Lastly, there's also a third mutation that's not specifically identified here um, called a G6PC3 mutation. Now, it's not shown here because I, for the life of me, couldn't figure out how to draw G6PC3 outside of just writing it in the snow. So um, hopefully just remember that there's three people in line right here. So PC3 um, and then G6. Uh, see if we can maybe think of something else, but... Hopefully that might help. But the main ones that we really have to care about are definitely ELA2 and possibly HEX1. Lastly, we have this gentleman or lady, can't really tell, over here who is face down in the snow and dead. And that's because, uh, one, she took for so long for the line to move that he just finally died. And two, that Kostman syndrome is a severe disease. Severe disease. Um, and that's ev evidenced by this person here who just couldn't hack it. So. We have severe disease, 
for a person face down in the snow. And that's Kosman syndrome. So three, disease, three congenital neutropenia is down. Last one that we're going to talk about in this video is over on the ski slope right here. And this group over here is, uh, we have two main symbols to help us remember what this is for, right here and right here. We have a black diamond slope and a skier falling down in the, oops, falling down into the snow going with a, you know, maybe like a schwack sound. And this is for, yep, you guessed it, Schwackman diamond syndrome. Schwackman, Schwackman diamond, Schwackman diamond. Be careful not to confuse this with diamond black fan, which is, I, is my fault, especially confusing since this is black diamond, but this is... Diamond black fan syndrome is an, a, uh, is an anemia of red blood cells. So similarly related, but not the same thing as what we're talking here with Schwachmann diamond, a congenital neutropenia. Okay, so now that we have that, what this disease is called, it's characterized by uh, a few different symptoms. The first of which, uh, or before we get to that, sorry, the uh, genetic cause of Schwachmann diamond syndrome is a mutation in the SBDS gene. Now, I tried to slide, uh, show that here by putting down slow your butts down skiers sign um, and highlighting the four main letters that we have to care about. So S, B, D, S, slow your butts down skiers, S, B, D, S. That's the main mutation that we have to care about. Now, the symptoms that it's characterized by, first is pancytopenia, which Sketchy has a recurring symbol that I'll always try and use the same symbols that they use if it's appropriate and I can remember what they are. And that's for dropping a pan. In this case, we have this random passerby who has a pan of cookies. I don't know why he's on a ski slope with cookies, but hey, not, not judging him. And he's dropping it to get out of the way of this uh, skier face planting. Dropping a pan of cookies, pancytopenia. Pancytopenia. All right, the next big symptom that we have to worry about is pancreatic insufficiency. Now, the way I tried to show this is by with this gear right here, who has a beanie on that looks a little bit like a pancreas, maybe flipped around um, to help remind us of pancreatic insufficiency. And lastly, we have uh, skeletal deformities and growth retardation. Now, the growth retardation is shown here by the fact that it's kind of hard to tell with this, this little face planting dude right here, but this guy and this guy are both looking like little kids, and that's because we have retarded their growth. So they're frozen in like childhood state, growth retardation. And that about does it for our uh, Schwachmann diamond uh, syndrome. And that's the four main diseases or congenital neutropenias. Again, Fanconi anemia, cyclic neutropenia, Kostman, Schwachmann diamond. Those are our four main congenital neutropenias. Lastly, over here in, here this, in this corner, we have our treatments of these congenital neutropenias, which they're all roughly the same. First, uh, the first line treatment is providing GCSF uh, growth stimulating factor. So that's evidenced right here by this little kid who's trying to get taller um, so that he can meet the requirement to go skiing. So that'll be a recurring symbol for GCSF in these videos. If it's an emergency or if there's a uh, ref if it's refractory to treatment, like they're still getting sick even though you're trying to do this growth treatment, um, or it's, if it's a uh, functional defect or if it's acutely life-threatening, we can also give them transfusions of granulocytes, of these neutrophils. And that's uh, evidenced here by this fuse box, which will be a recurring symbol for a transfusion, a fuse box. Now, fevers in these, in in these neutropenic individuals, um, we basically always consider them infectious, no matter what. If someone's neutropenic and they come in and they have a fever, it is presumed that they have what's called febrile neutropenia, and that's evidenced by this gentleman's feverish forehead, and he's on this neutrophil slope, neutropenia slope. So he has a some presumptive febrile neutropenia, any fever. And the way that we treat these fevers is empirically with antibiotics. So we have a gentleman here who's offering him some antibiotic pills. Particularly, we want antibiotics that are sensitive for pseudomonas. And that's evidenced here by my wonderfully artistic interpretation of a stick figure, uh, Mona Lisa, which is the recurring sketchy symbol for uh, pseudomonas. So we have our pseudomona stick figure here for treatment of pseudomonas. And then, of course, includes um, some drugs like... Uh, uh, Piperacillin and Ticracillin, I think I said those right. All right, so um, that covers it for the congenital neutropenias. Again, just as a quick overview, Fanconi anemia, DNA repair is broken, Fanconi thumbs, bone marrow failure. We have our cyclic neutropenia, affects children, self-resolves with maturity, um, involves ELA2 mutation, cyclic on a cycle of 21 to uh, 30 days. We have our uh, Kosman syndrome over here, 
which is um, ANC less than 200, just like cyclic neutropenia. Also has an ELA2 mutation, but can also have a HAX1 or three people, G6PC3 mutation, and is uh, probably the most severe of these four diseases. And then lastly, we have our Blackman or Schwachman Diamond syndrome, Schwachman Diamond, which is uh, due to an SBDS mutation and characterized by pancytopenia, pancreatic ins insufficiency, and skeletal deformity or growth retardation. And the treatment of these is uh, GCSF primarily, or in acutely such acute situations, we can give uh, transfusions. And febrile neutropenia is treated empirically with pseudomonas sensitive antibiotics. And that's it for the congenital neutropenias. The next video that we're going to be going on to is our major neutrophil disorders. So let's hop over to that.